Welcome back to our ESPN Cleveland 101.3 weekly player interview here on uh, from Bradley Central High School. Brought to you by Buddy's Barbecue on Paul Hub Parkway and produced here in Studio H12 at Bradley Central High School. Uh, our guest this week is one of our seniors, Mr. Landon Scott, one of our very few seniors this year. And folks, as to like last year, we had, what, 23 or 24? Yeah. Seven, seven, I think, total for the team this year. And Brandon? Uh, I think counting, like, the kickers, I think it's, like, uh, nine or ten. Oh, okay. Well, uh, let's talk about you. What position do you play for the Bears? Uh, and we're going to let you update this because you're going to move to a different position. Tell yeah, us where you so started and where you're at. Come in I start right. uh, both ways. Uh, I'm a full, the fullback for the wing tee, and then I was the outside linebacker, like the bandit we call it. But mm -hmm. we had um, Will Paisley go out, and we got Anthony Perez out, both starting DN. So I'm going to move to left DN. It's going to be. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for him to help out the team, just do what I got to do. You like to hit people on defense? Yeah. Well, we was talking before that we started the show here. You're the fullback in the wing tee. Yeah. And what's the, what's the fun part of being that? You said something to me. Uh, pancakes. Blocking Pancake people. block there. Is the wing tee, was it hard for you guys to adjust from a spread offense to a wing tee a couple, of three weeks ago? Honestly, when we started doing it, I thought, I thought it was going to be harder than it actually is, but we've adjusted really good, and everybody's, everybody's getting it pretty good. We're starting to block better. We're starting to know our assignments better. We're starting to get it down pretty good, I'd say. Who is your uh, position coach as a running back? Uh, coach Stanford. How about as, on the defensive side, who's your coach, defensive um, head coach? Uh, Benefield really does it all. He coaches everybody, but uh, it's the D-line coach is um, Deals, Coach Deals. Coach Deals. Yeah. Well, you got some pretty good heads right there. Uh, where'd you play middle school ball at? Uh, Lake Forest Middle School. Did, what positions were you playing? Our same defense, offense, both ways? I, I played middle linebacker in middle school instead of uh, outside, and then I was running back. I was still running back in middle school, too. So you played both ways there, too? Yeah, I played both ways. It, six day football, though, is it tough to play both ways? I mean, do you get tired or exhausted? Or you just uh, get that adrenaline going, you're good to go? Um, or? Start of the game, the adrenaline, adrenaline's really pumping. And then once you get settled in, you're like, okay, you know, we're just playing football. Then, uh, yeah, I get a little tired. Sometimes they'll take me out fullback because uh, I don't come off the field on defense. But we got Brady Lewis behind me. Mm -hmm. He's pretty good at uh, fullback, too. So they'll throw him in for a couple plays, get me water and stuff, and then I'll go back in. Let's walk back now. You've been playing football four years, but you were injured. Sophomore year. Now, what, tell us that, what that play was and what happened and what was the injury about there. Uh, I, was, I was running the ball, and I was getting held up by, by a couple guys, and this uh, strong safety came down, just full speed, and dove into my knee. Uh, broke my femur, and I fractured my growth plate, I think. I still got some screws in there from, from it. Are you 100% healthy right now, you think, physically? Yeah, yeah, I was. It only took about six months for the bone to... Only six months. Good grief. That's a long time. Uh, yeah, but usually, if, like, if it was like an ACL mm -hmm. tear, it would probably have been way more actual recovery process. But that, your sophomore year, I believe, wasn't it? Yeah. And, and who were we playing that night when that happened? Do you recall? Uh, Baylor. Baylor. They, it, was a, it was a JV game. I was still still young. They were going to play me uh, that, uh, the next game, too, and then I broke my leg. So you missed the rest of the year there. So. Yeah. So you only really got back into it as a junior last year then. Mm -hmm. as, you, as you look down the road there, would you like to play football in college? If I have the opportunity and someone's interested, I would, I would definitely take the, I would definitely take the offer. And if probably, football's not there, where would you like to go to school? They have a preference there. Uh, Middle Tennessee State University, MTSU. To study what? Uh, I'm gonna be study like business management, probably like a project manager or a supply chain management when I get older. It's probably the goal there. Uh, I don't know if Coach mentioned this to you, probably not knowing him, that he started Red Bank High School. You know, he played two years there. Yeah. He came to Brad as a junior. Pretty good running back. You know, he had the record for a while, and he was also a state champion wrestler. So he was a good athlete in his own right there. Uh, and, and Red Bank, a lot of people will not know this, is our second oldest opponent behind McMahon County. So there's a lot of history there between these two schools. But uh, what's he told you about this team? What's his concern uh, to you guys when you're in the film room or when you're practicing? Is there a certain thing he says, we've just got to do this, we can't allow this to happen? Or, or what's he look uh, at? They do got some strong athletes. Um, they run for a lot of yards. Yeah. They got that running back. Wasn't he's like all region? Yeah, Featherstone. Yeah. Yeah. So they got a good running back. So, um, and they do pass good too. Um, he was talking about the quick screens, and they do take some shots after they run the ball good. Uh, so really just focusing on uh, everything, the run, the pass, all the quick screens, all that. 
what are your keys at defensive end? What will you be looking for? What What are your responsibilities we know on the line in the ball is snapped? Or I know you tackle uh, a runner. It, it's but. dependent on the call that, that the linebackers call out to us. Yeah. Um, most of the time I'm just shooting into a gap, and if he, the guard pulls, I have to follow him and stay flat and fast and stuff like that. Who's the linebacker that makes your defensive calls usually? Uh, Wiley Susquich. Wiley Wolfman. He's a good boy. He's another fireball he's, there, too. He's a, he's a dog. I like him. <laughs> he's, he ain't real big, but I'm telling you, you know you've been in a dog fight yeah. with him out there. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Everybody stay healthy. We don't need anybody else out of the game. Can't, we can't take it. It's, it's getting up. It, and I'll, I asked Damon in our interview with him, you guys focused on Red Bank, not thinking ahead to next week when the guys come across town come calling? Or, uh, but this is homecoming. It's an important game for us, but it yeah. is Red Bank. So you guys are ready for him. I think right. we're ready for them. Well, we'll find out come Friday night at 7 o'clock kickoff, folks. Join us on ESPN Cleveland 1013 at 530. As we have our pregame show, we'll have our coaches uh, interview, player interview, and our football panel, as always. Until next time, this is Gary Olman for Lance Scott. Thank you, Lance, for being here. Thank God you for bless and go Bears.